So, I've decided to sell my Canon R5. Here's why. So for a lot of you guys who have been following my photographer filmmaking journey, you know that I've been a huge Canon fan. I started with the Canon T2i, from there I got the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, the 6D Mark II, then I got the 1DX Mark II, the EOS R, and then the Canon R5. So that's a lot of Canon cameras that I've owned and shot with in the past. Canon cameras are what I'm used to, comfortable with, and I've loved shooting with them. That is until I got the R5. Let me explain why. You see, when the Canon R5 launched, I was so excited. I remember watching that launch video and seeing all these videos coming about, talking about the specs of this camera, the high quality, the IBIS, the slow motion, 8K, all these features. And in my mind, I thought, yes, this is finally gonna be the perfect photo video camera that I need because I wanna be able to shoot photos when I'm shooting weddings and shooting travel photos, but as well, I want a camera that can uh, be used for vlogging, for shooting epic B-roll, and that I wouldn't have to use a gimbal, which was something I was really excited about because finally the R5 got IBIS. When I decided to bite the bullet and buy the Canon R5, it was the first time that I really invested a lot of money into camera. But when I finally got the Canon R5 beforehand, my expectations were up here, but then the user experience was down here, and let me explain to you why. Like I said before, the reason why I was so excited about the Canon R5 was because it would be finally the one camera body that would rule all. I would be able to use this for shooting photos, for shooting video, I'd get my epic B-roll, I could vlog, and I wouldn't have to use a gimbal because it would have IBIS. In the past, the stabilization wasn't the best on Canon cameras, and now the R5 claimed to have really great IBIS. But then when I went out to shoot with this camera the first few times, first I was testing out the 120 frames per second, and quite quickly the camera overheated. I remember I was in the forest shooting with the camera and it overheated and I had to wait like 10, 20 minutes. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And at this point, there hadn't been all those videos yet about the overheating issues. So I was just totally blindsided by that. So already some alarm bells are going off in my mind. I just spent thousands of euros buying the R5 and I'm going, what the heck is going on here? Okay, so then with some firmware, things got better. It wasn't overheating as much, but still, it kind of felt like you're promised something, but then the reality was down here. It's kind of like there's always a caveat. It's like when you're getting a car insurance or something like that, and there's always a catch somewhere, and I hate that. I love it when people and companies and organizations are completely transparent with what the product or service is. Then after the overheating problem, we got the IBIS problem. I was so excited about having IBIS really smooth footage for when I'm filming that epic B-roll, and then I noticed that there was the wobble. The corners would be wobbling like a jello effect, and to be honest, if I was vlogging, it was unwatchable. It was distracting. It was making the audience feel dizzy, and I got a lot of comments from you guys saying, oh, the R5 jello effect, and it started getting to me because I had this feeling like, man, I paid so much money for this camera, I was promised something, but again, there was a caveat. Yes, we did get IBIS, but there was a jello effect, which was something that I was really disappointed in. Again, the specs were up here, but the experience was down here. Then, for me, probably the final straw was editing the footage. Now, I had a 2018 MacBook Pro, pretty good specs, so it should be doing fine, but the moment I tried to edit the 4K 120 frames per second or 4K HQ, let alone the 8K, that I wasn't even touching because I knew that my computer wouldn't be able to handle it, but editing the footage was just a nightmare. I was having to, you know, while I was editing, it would just like skip, and I had to keep re-rendering out stuff just to be able to watch a little bit, and it got to the point where I had to start using proxies. And now for some people, that wouldn't be a big deal, like it's like, so what, that will just, Make the proxies, then you can edit the footage. But for me, when I'm creating YouTube videos and putting out content at a very fast pace, that's just one extra step that I don't need in my workflow. So for me, that was just like the final straw that I was really disappointed with the R5. Now at this point, even though I was really frustrated with the R5, at that point I had spent a lot of money on the camera body and different lenses. 
that it felt almost dumb to just switch over to a new camera system. So I stuck with the R5. I just pushed through my frustrations and kept shooting with this camera. But then I moved to Canada and you guys all know that last year I had the opportunity to work alongside my brother Maddie, and he shoots with Sony cameras. So because I was working for Maddie, of course it was my turn to pick up a Sony camera and learn how to use it. And even though it felt uncomfortable taking a new camera, learning the buttons, figuring out the menus and settings, I quickly learned that the Sony a7 III was exactly what I was looking for in the R5. The Sony a7 III didn't have overheating issues, it didn't have that weird jello wobble ibis effect, and the files were really easy to edit with. So the Sony a7 III really had everything that I wanted in the R5. So that's why at the beginning of this year, I made the decision to invest in Sony gear. I bought first the ZV-1 because I want a really small, lightweight camera, and then I got the Sony a7 III, which I'm filming with right now. Did it break the bank? Yes, it did. And do I have a lot of Canon gear just lying around now? Yes, I gotta figure out whether I should sell it or exchange it for other Sony gear. But was it worth it? Yes. I have really enjoyed shooting with the Sony a7 III and I'm just waiting excitedly to see what other amazing gear Sony puts out this year and the years to come. So Canon friends, hopefully you are not offended by this. If you enjoy using the R5 or other Canon cameras, that's fine. Maybe they work perfect for you, but for my workflow, for my style of photography and filmmaking, this camera did not exceed my expectations. My expectations were up here and my experience was down here and that's why I decided to not use the Canon R5 anymore, instead shoot with the Sony a7 III. All right, I think we've uh, talked about cameras enough today. Maybe I should be a mature adult now and clean my mess. I, I have cleaned a little bit around the office. Okay, maybe not too much. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed my insights about the R5 and the Sony a7 III. I'm gonna be a responsible adult now and do some cleaning. And just like that, we're done. We just gotta go now, bring it outside to the garbage. Lesson of the day is, when you're an adult, you can't only have fun. You can't enjoy just the unboxing, you also gotta take the stuff. This is very hard carrying this and filming at the same time. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy this video. Love you guys.